Hi, I'm Philip with Ross Monster, and this is the Ross Monster Baja EX and LX. So we'll start on the exterior. Both the LX and the EX are essentially identical and both can be optioned with a variety of accessories. This one on the EX has the bodyguard upgraded bumper with Baja Designs lights included. We also have the 50 inch Baja Designs light bar. We'll pop around to the side. Let's look at suspension, wheels and tires. So for wheels and tires, we have Method wheels as well as the BFG All-Terrain 37-inch tires. For suspension, we've got custom valve Carly pin top suspension featuring King shocks. So our camper entry door has a couple great features. We can lock a deadbolt here with a key as well as a key fob or we can use a custom entry code. Moving on back to our custom Ross Monster Max Tracks table, this is a great option to store our recovery boards. We get to camp, we simply pull these two Drop it down and we've got a great horizontal surface to work with at camp. This EX features a large storage box. This is a great place to store your firewood, wet gear, hiking shoes, and it's also lockable. Coming around to the rear of the vehicle, we have our three Molly panels. These are each rated for up to 100 pounds of gear. We can throw axes, shovels, and a variety of different accessories here. Moving on to our rear bumper, it's gonna feature LED lights. If your vehicle came with factory sensors, those are gonna be incorporated in here. Most of these trucks, depending on the configuration, can tow in excess of 10,000 pounds. Make sure to check your owner's manual for the exact specifications. Coming around to the driver's side, we've got our shore power plug up to 30 amps. Just below that, we've got our outdoor shower. This is a great feature. It includes hot and cold water. Simply take your shower attachment. It's gonna plug in right into here. Turn it to the right. And now you've got hot and cold water to come out here and wash the dog or take a shower. We put this on the driver's side so when you're actually using this, you're not gonna make a mess in front of your camp door. Just below this, we've got our fresh water fill as well. Here we're going to find our fuel fill, so whether your vehicle is diesel or gas, we'll fill it up here. If it is a diesel, you'll also find your DEF fluid here, which is diesel exhaust fluid. On the roof, you'll find 600 watts of solar, a skylight, your 12-volt air conditioner, and your max air fan. A really nice feature you can add to your Baja is the Fiamma F45 manual awning. A couple quick notes about the awning. You want to avoid deploying this in significant winds. Additionally, it's definitely not recommended to leave the vehicle with the awning deployed. To operate the awning, we're simply going to grab our awning arm here. I'm going to hook it in the eyelet on the front of the awning and simply rotate it. I can crank the awning out just a little bit if I like, but I'm going to go all the way out for this purposes and we're going to deploy the legs of this awning. Once I get to where I like it, I'll stop there. We can simply pull our legs out, rotate it down, turn the knob, get it to the height I like, tighten the knob. I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg. If you're on a surface, you can stake the awning legs down. That would be ideal. And to store the awning, you're going to do just the opposite. You've seen the outside. Let's hop inside and check out the interior. So 
So moving into the interior of the LX, this is where we're gonna see the primary differences between the two models. In the LX, we're gonna find a wet bath with a full-size shower and one of three toilets. We'll also find a microwave and our refrigerator is gonna be Isotherm Cruise 130. In comparison, the EX is going to feature a drop-down shower just inside the entry door, a composting toilet conveniently hidden away on 500-pound slides in a drawer, and it's also going to have the Isotherm Cruise 160 drawer-style refrigerator. Next, we'll talk about the controls of the Baja. We'll start with the Victron Energy Battery Monitor. Our Victron Energy battery monitor is how we're going to keep an eye on the health of our battery system. We're going to use the plus and minus button here to scroll through a few screens to give us a variety of information. The first screen we're on here is showing us our battery percentage. We're at 99.8%, which is obviously very, very healthy. As I scroll through our next screen here, that's going to tell us how long we can do what we're doing based on the energy we're consuming. It's telling me I can do what we're doing right now with the lights, the refrigerator on for 87 hours. Moving on to our next screen. This is telling us the voltage of the system. This is a 12 volt system and we're showing 13.25 volts, which is very healthy again. I might even see this number going all the way up into the 14s when I'm idling or driving the vehicle. If that number starts to get down into the mid 12s, it's probably time to start charging the batteries. Scrolling on to the next screen, this is telling us how much energy we're either consuming or making. If this is a negative number, I'm using more energy than I might be taking in via solar. If this is a positive number, then I'm making more energy than I'm using. And right now we're using negative six amps with what we have going on. As I scroll to the next screen, this is showing us that same metric, but in watts. This is important to note as we have a 3000 watt inverter and we can keep an eye on that and make sure we don't cross the threshold of 3000 watts. Scrolling down to one more screen here, this is telling us how much of our battery bank we have used. This is an 800 amp hour battery bank and we have used only 3.8 amp hours. One other note on our battery monitor, if we download the Victron Connect app, we can conveniently see all of the information in that battery monitor right here on our phone. I can see my battery percentage, my battery voltage, how much energy I'm using, that same information in watts, the amount of our battery bank that we have consumed in amp hours and how long we can do what we're doing based on the energy we're using. One other very important note when it comes to our battery system and the app, it's important to get in the habit once a month to open the app and connect to all of your systems, including your battery monitor. The reason we're doing that, we wanna check in the top right hand corner here on the little settings tab. If there was a little exclamation point, that would let me know that there is an update that Victron has sent out. I want to get in the habit once a month of checking for an update. This update is going to do an update via Bluetooth. It takes just about 60 seconds, but it's incredibly important. By doing this, we're making sure that our system is up to date and our battery monitor is performing as it should and everything is completely up to date. Next, we'll move on to the Firefly screen. The Firefly screen is how we're going to control our lighting, refrigerator, water pump, and a few other things. As I select the screen that lights up, I'm going to come to the left side here and select the home button. This is our home page. It gives me my master light on and off, and we can dial into the lights here in just a second on the lighting page. It also shows me my freshwater and gray water tank monitors, as well as the battery voltage. I'm going to move down to our lighting page here by selecting the lighting button. And here I will see all of my individual lighting zones that I can control independently. One of the really nice features about this, I can control my lights by dimming them. If I simply select a zone and I hold it down, the lights will dim. And when I let off, let's stop dimming. Now, when I turn the master switch off and back on again, my lights come back on to where I dimmed them. It's a really nice feature. Moving on to my next page here. This allows me to control my refrigerator and my water pump. As these are lit up blue, it's telling me they are on right now. Coming down to our last page here, this is the settings page. This is where you can control the screen brightness as well as set your time and date and your temperature units. Another neat feature about this is cleaning mode. If I select that, the screen will time out for about 10 seconds and I can wipe it down and clean it without doing any button inputs. This is our controller for our electric actuators. This is how we're going to raise and lower the top of the Baja. It's important to note before I raise or lower the top to check the interior of the camper for any obstructions that might interfere. Additionally, checking outside before I raise the top to make sure there aren't any tree branches or anything else that might cause some problems. To lower the top, I'm simply gonna grab the outside of it and turn it to the left. The top will automatically stop when it reaches the bottom threshold and will automatically stop when it reaches the top.
Next, we'll move on to our heater. Our heating system is the Aqua Hot Hydronic Heating System. This is gonna provide us hot water for our shower as well as doing dishes at the sink. It's also gonna provide hot air for the camper. As I look at my control screen here, I've got a couple different heating zones and I've got two different options for selecting heat. I have a burner as well as an electric option. The burner option is what you're gonna use probably 99% of the time. The burner is gonna draw off the factory fuel tank and it's gonna provide heat via a little small burner underneath the back of the vehicle. The electric option should be considered as a backup or secondary option. Electric can provide heat, of course, but it will draw a significant amount of battery. So you'll want to be plugged into shore power or drive in the vehicle, ideally when you're using the electric element. To select heating on the AquaHot, I'm gonna to come to the bottom right hand button and I'm gonna select interior heating priority. It's gonna light up blue for me. I come back to my home screen here and I'm gonna select the burner option by turning this on. My status now says interior heat, but nothing has changed on my thermostatic controls. I need to go to each of my thermostatic controls here and set those. So I'm gonna select my first one here. I'm gonna turn my thermostat to the on position and I need to turn the thermostat setting above the ambient temperature. Our ambient temperature right now is saying 59 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up above that and I'll hit set. And now I can hear the fan kick on and it's gonna start providing heat inside the camper. As I move to my next thermostatic zone here, this particular vehicle is optioned with in-floor radiant heat, which is a fantastic feature. I'm gonna turn this one on as well. Again, my radiant, or excuse me, my temperature here says 58 degrees, degrees for the ambient temperature. I have this set to 79, I'm gonna go ahead and hit set. And now I can see on my screen that both my temperature zones are providing heat. So here in just about 10 minutes, this will be incredibly nice and warm and comfortable. And I'll also have hot water available. Our cooktop is a two burner induction cooktop. You'll need Ferris cookware in order to utilize this. One important note on your cooktop, it is glass. So as we're driving the vehicle, be mindful of what you might have stored above that. Something might shift and if you open this up, you could drop something on there. So be very mindful of that. Moving on down to our refrigerator. Our isotherm refrigerator is extremely efficient, but a couple notes on this as well. It utilizes circulation to properly cool. So we wanna really avoid stuffing it absolutely full when we're using this refrigerator. If I can put cold items in there versus warm, temp warm items, that's gonna be helpful for the refrigerator as well. It has a setting of approximately one to seven. We find that about four is the optimal setting for the refrigerator. Here in the dinette, we have our Lagoon table mount. This dinette is also gonna convert into a sleeping space. We simply take the top of this table, set it down here, and we'll rearrange our cushions to make that space. Underneath our dinette, we're gonna be concealing our electrical systems as well as our plumbing systems. We'll take a look at that next. So here in the LX, underneath the passenger side of the dinette, we're gonna find our battery bank. This particular LX is optioned with 800 amp hours. We can add up to 1200 amp hour battery bank here if we'd like. With 800 amp hours, you can see we've got an ample amount of additional storage here. The EX is gonna come standard with 800 amp hour battery bank. Here in the LX, in the center portion of our dinette, we're gonna find a few more of our electrical components. You really shouldn't have to access this area too often, with one exception. Our inverter is located here. One of the things we wanna get in the habit of doing once a month is plugging the vehicle into shore power and charging until we get to a float charge. We can see the float charge indicated on the inverter on the light right here and it says float. When we do this, we're not only charging the batteries to 100%, we're also balancing the cells in the battery and making sure that our battery monitor is properly calibrated. Aside from that, we really shouldn't have to spend any time in here. All of our components are fused or have breakers to protect them, and we've made them very easy to access. They're all located here under our fuse panel. Additionally, just down here, we've got our master on and off switch. This is a super simple way, if we're storing the vehicle, to simply turn off all of our controls by switching that switch off, and we're good to store. Here under the driver's side of the dinette in the LX, we'll find a few of our plumbing components. We can see our aqua hot heating system here. One thing we'll wanna check every once in a while is making sure we have the proper amount of coolant in our coolant reservoir here. I can see some of my plumbing lines here on the plumbing manifold, and these are all properly labeled. I can also see my water pump here. 
One note on the plumbing, we made it extremely easy to winterize your vehicle. Our plumbing blowout port is located just here. Moving on to our sink. The sink's going to be covered by a cutting board. We'll want to have our water pump on, of course, in order to call for water. We simply raise the sink up. With the water pump on, we can turn the knob from cold to hot. An important thing to note about our water pump, it is an on-demand water pump. That means that I should only hear my water pump running when I'm calling for water. If I hear the water pump run and I'm not calling for water, I'll want to double check all of my faucets to make sure I didn't leave one open for a leak. Lastly, it's a very important note that as I'm uh, raising and lowering the top, I want to make sure this is stowed properly. Here at the cab over bed, we've got our ladder to access the bed. This can be used in one of two ways. It's in the stored position now, but if I want a little bit easier access once I've arrived to camp, I can simply lift my ladder up, set it on the lower hooks, and I've got much easier access up into the bed. The bed is going to feature some storage cubbies just behind me here for clothes and gear. It's also got two reading lights with USB ports to charge your fan. Just up top here is your skylight, which does has a sunshade and a bug screen. And let's talk about our other features on the roof, including our AC and max air fan. Just above me here is our air conditioner. This is the Nomadic 12 volt air conditioner. It can be operated via the control panel here or via this handy remote. It's a very efficient system, but it does draw a fair amount of energy, so you'll want to be mindful of that. Just above the dinette is the Max Air Fan. The Max Air Fan can be controlled via the remote control or on the controls on the fan unit itself. It has multiple speeds and it can be reversed. In other words, we can send air in or out of the camper with the fan. One of the really cool features about the Baja is the pass-through. It allows you access to the cab or camper. You can use your petition to help minimize heat transfer and reduce road noise when you're driving. That wraps up the Ross Monster Baja LX and EX Tour. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram so you never miss a tour.